Welcome to My Own Little House. This is Mary Catherine, and today's video will be a little bit different. We're taking a day trip, but to a slightly different place. In early January, on a very rainy day, I drove Adam over to Duke University for a new doctor's appointment with a new doctor for his autoimmune illness. That's a beautiful loaf of bread. Then later in early March, he went back for an infusion and he baked sent this wonderful bread beforehand to take for his snack. Mm. That middle section though. So we went back for the first infusion. It was a very long day and really stressful. We did not know how it would go, um, but it went very well. He had a mild allergic reaction, but otherwise he was able to tolerate the medication. While we were there, I decided to walk around the campus and see the wonderful chapel at Duke. It is gorgeous and it was a very beautiful day. So here's some footage of that. The noise that you hear is a boy skateboarding in the parking lot. I did discover that the entire campus is absolutely gorgeous. The stone buildings are stunning. Uh, the grounds are so beautiful and it was very early spring, but um, it was a wonderful thing to do on a very stressful day. It was very calming for me to be able to walk outside and enjoy that. It was strange to be on a college campus again. Look at those stone buildings. Aren't they stunning? They also do keep the chapel open, and I was briefly able to go in before Adam texted me and asked me to come back. But here is a little view of the front doorway to the chapel. And then there'll be a little bit of footage on the inside. Stained glass windows, vaulted stone ceilings, beautiful lighting, those incredible pillars. It's just gorgeous. And this is the organ in the back. Hello, everybody. Well, I've got a little something to show you today that was very fun to make. I'm not quite finished with it yet. And I didn't come up with this idea on my own. I was watching Kate Jackson on Sunday. Today's Tuesday. Um, <clears throat> I was watching her on Sunday and she was spinning again. I haven't seen her spin on her Ashford traditional wheel in a long time. She was spinning some pink merino. And she was drinking tea and she was showing us her teapot and things. Oh, her channel, if anybody doesn't know about Kate, her channel is called The Last Homely House, and uh, if you do not subscribe to her, you probably would like her. So I'll put, there'll be a link I'll put up here at some point to this video. Because when she was um, showing us her teapot, she had this little pot holder or um, trivet, you know, a, a cloth trivet kind of thing underneath her teapot. And it was, she had spun the yarn, she had um, knitted the item and then she had felted it and I was like duh this little explosion of amazement went off in my head of, um, of what a good idea that is because the pot holders that I've made in the past um, you know if they're knitted or crocheted they're gonna have holes and you're gonna burn yourself through some of those holes unless you just do layers and layers but if you felt them oh my goodness what a brilliant idea that would be and another thing I like about felting something like that is you could use up some wool yarn that you'd spun that you ended up not liking. Well, I had some of that. And, um, <clears throat> and it also really doesn't matter. Uh, the stitches don't make any difference because it all felts together into a solid mass of fabric. So I had this yarn that I had done. Uh, I, I just don't like this green. It's a very piney looking green. And I had blended it with some of that um, flame and there's some pink in there. 
and there's some white in there. Anyway, it's got some, a mottled look to it. It's not terrible, but I didn't want um, a whole I didn't want a whole sweater or anything made out of it. So uh, my husband had to go for an infusion at the Specialty Infusion Center in at Duke yesterday in Durham, North Carolina. We drove over there and he was there for hours and hours and hours. And so I needed things to do as I sat there with him while he had his infusion. So I knitted this first one. Um, now this is, okay, hang on. This is not any kind of a hard project. Okay, this is actually eight inches without pulling it. It's eight inches across. It's a square, so it's eight inches and eight inches. Well, it's a little bit, yeah, it's close. <clears throat> And I love this pattern. I wrote down this pattern um, from a friend of mine named Judy, and I may have talked about it before. You can make a pot holder out of this. You can make um, a, a doll blanket out of it. You can make a baby blanket out of it. You can make an adult blanket out of it. You can make it as big or as small as you like. And you cast on at one corner. I, I think I cast on down here, I don't remember. I cast on with three stitches. Um, just a little, a short tail cast on with three stitches. And you add, to get a square, you add uh, one stitch per row at the beginning of each row, um, well, the second stitch of each row, until I, I did it until I had 40 stitches across. And then you reduce one stitch per row, same way, until you get back down to a point and you tie it off and you have your square. Easy as can be. And if you want to make it really, really long and make it into a blanket, you can. If you want it to be this big, you can have a tiny little square. Um, as easy, as easy as can be. Um, I am using, here's my circular needles. These are size eight. I thought that would be a good in-between size. I didn't want it too wholly big because I want it to really felt up. Um, but the yarn is pretty chunky, so I didn't want to use teeny needles. So I'm starting my second one because I do think I've got enough. I didn't have my scale with me yesterday, but I think I've got enough to do one more. So let me tell you what I did. Um, if you want it, if you're not going to felt it and you really want it to have this nice little border around the edge, then the instruction, and I'll, maybe I'll type this up and put it in the description. Um, Judy used size seven knitting needles um, and cotton yarn to make a dishcloth. I've made many of these dishcloths. Um, she just, she cast on four stitches and then she slips the first stitch she knits the second stitch, she yarn overs the third stitch, and then she knits the rest of the row. And you do this on every row until you get to however, however wide you want it to be. <clears throat> so slip one, knit one, yarn over one, and then knit the remaining stitches. And that's the other thing is there's no purling on this, which is very lovely. Now, what that yarn over gives you is this little hole. So it's, it's a little, little cute little hole design going up both sides of the piece every other row is how it works. I evidently preferred size eight needles to size seven. So then you get to the widest spot and you knit one whole row across. I don't think I did that on this because it didn't matter, but that's what the pattern says to do. Knit one row at the widest spot. And then when you start reducing, this is how you do it at the beginning of each row. You slip one, you knit two together, that's your reduction. Then you yarn over, that gives you the little hole again. Then you knit two together, and then you knit the remaining rows, okay? Um, so let me say that again. Slip one, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and knit the rest of the row. And you do that until you um, have only, it says start each row this way until you have four stitches remaining. Um, then when you have four left at the very end, you knit two together twice on that row, then you have two stitches left, and you knit them together and you're done. So um, this this has been one of the most useful um, little patterns I've had, and now I've got another use for it because I'm gonna felt it. And I do think that when I felt this, you know, it may be a little wonky, who knows how it's gonna shrink. You never know with felting, but all those holes should disappear and it will reduce by about 30%, I hope, okay? So it might be, you know, something like this big, okay? Which is a really good size for grabbing something out of the oven. I, I don't like something too big because it's floppy and you, 
run a bigger chance of hurting yourself because you can't manage its floppiness. All right, so I'm going to go stick this in the washer with three tennis balls and my felted slippers that I made for myself because they need to be washed again because they need to shrink up. And um, we will see how it turns out and I'll let you know. Well, it's quite a bit later. We won't even say how much later it is, but I figured I'd better show you how that turned out. I actually had to go find this hot pad because I had lost it. <laughs> I put it in the laundry, the kitchen laundry. So here's how it came out. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but I can look through it and see you. There are, it's not, um, it is felted. All the fibers are joined together beautifully, but it didn't full. It didn't shrink. Matter of fact, where is my ruler? It is, oh, it did lose about, it lost about an inch. It didn't lose as much as I wanted it to. So it's about seven inches square now instead of six. Um, I mean, I'm pretty pleased with it, but I wanted it to go tighter. I have a different washing machine now than I used to have when I was felting slippers. Um, my old one was a half-size washer that didn't have a core, and so it just threw everything around a lot. And so I think that things uh, had, that felted items got more agitation in that washer. Now I have a full size washer with the core. And so everything just kind of uh, does this shimmy and it doesn't get quite as much violence done to it in the load. So I'm going to keep on washing and see if I can get it to shrink some more. Um, if I can, I think I'll be happier to use it as a hot pad because I don't want anything that is likely to let any heat through the fabric at any weak spot in between these rows. So we're going to see if we can get it to, to fold down even more. All right, well, now we're going to move ahead with the rest of our experience at Duke. Two weeks after the first infusion, we went back for the second infusion, and he made some bread again. This time, it turned out even better. We were more relaxed this time because we'd had a good first experience, and so here we are in the waiting room. Poor Adam has to sit in that chair with a needle in his arm all day long, but I got to get up and move around. The second infusion went extremely well, even though he was fatigued. I walked around inside the buildings this time, and it was beautiful. There's a woman playing a baby grand piano in this atrium in the Duke Cancer Center. Can you hear it? This was also very calming in its own way for everyone. They really think of their patients, and this is a beautiful seating area in the Cancer Center uh, for families to just sit and relax. I greatly appreciate what they offer at Duke. I didn't mean to turn on my camera, but it came on, so I guess I'll start, <laughs> Leo and I. Well, I wasn't going to show you this silly little project. This was a cardboard box that uh, Adam was given some socks at Christmas. Very nice socks, Pendleton socks. And as you would expect from Pendleton, you can kind of see the little bit of the label left in the window. It, yeah, it had this little plastic window in the top and a little magnetic closure. <laughs> um, they were really wonderful. And I, I looked at that box and I thought, oh dear, I can't throw it away. <laughs> um, and somebody else on some Facebook group took a shoe box and covered it in fabric and was keeping their crafty things in it when they were sitting on the bed so they would stop throwing things off the bed. And they even said they put um, fabric on the bottom so it wouldn't slide down the bed. Anyway, I'd been saving this box and I thought, well, yeah, I'll cover it with some fabric. I've got lots of fabric. So I picked out, I like this one really like this one and then I just love this one they're all kind of dark undertones of fall and red rusty red anyway I did the bottom first to see how it would work oh I used a different fabric for that I didn't like that one as well and what I'm using to adhere it to the box is this wonderful <laughs> super fabric adhesive 
Um, I've seen this in a lot of places. It's just, if you have fabric and you like crafting, you should have this lying around. And if you keep the top on it, it doesn't dry out. Um, so I started gluing fabric to the box and trying, trying to keep the raw edges, uh, you know, within limits. I don't want it to be too ugly. I really like that top. I was going to try to keep the parts of the window. I don't think I'm going to do that. I, that sounds too hard. But uh, somehow I ended up with this funky looking. I had this piece that I put down first and I tucked it under and glued it. And then I um, figured I'd better do this and put this around this edge. So then I ended up with these two folded edges next to each other. And I thought, well, I'll just stitch that with some yarn. This is a, a thinner, it's a simply soft yarn, so it's a little bit thin. And I have the needle for it. So I thought I would just stitch up. And then that'll, that'll just give a little extra something. <laughs> something to it. So I'm going to stitch this up. And then I'll keep on gluing. I still got to glue down these end panels. And that's the, yeah, that's the last of this. And then i got to figure out what I'm going to keep in it. But it'll be cuter than it was before. The only sad thing is that with all the fabric on here, now it doesn't, the magnet thing isn't working. However that worked. I'm not even sure how it worked. I can't feel any kind of anything in there. I don't even know how it worked. But that's okay. I don't care about that. Okay. Now I'll figure out a way to tuck that little end in there. Um, it's not going to be under any <clears throat> pressure, so I think it'll stay in fine. And of course, the reason I'm using this is to save my thumbs and my fingers from having to grab that needle. As we get older, that gets harder, doesn't it? Okay, so now I'll glue the sides down and then figure out what I'm going to do with it. I'm more pleased with this than I expected. Very cute. 